Port Phillip Bay has a rich maritime history with hundreds of wrecks scattered across the bay. Most are below the water, but a few can be seen above the waterline. In this video, I will visit the wrecks of the Henry Meakin, the Ozone and the J3 submarine. The best approach is directly from the south, with depths reducing to half a metre. Shallow draft boats can be taken right up to the wreck in the top half of the tide. The Henry Meakin, built in Scotland in 1906, was bought from the Natal government for use as a tug, barge and steam hopper in Corio Bay. She was 139 feet or 42 metres long with a 22 tonne capacity and powered by steam. After some 40 odd years of service, she was finally scuttled in 1948 off the Point Wilson Quarry in Corio Bay. With the short winter days, I stop off at Port Arlington for the night. In the morning, it's off to visit the wreck site of the ozone paddle steamer. The best approach is from the northeast, with the water becoming too shallow at around 20 metres from the wreck. The ozone paddle steamer was built in Scotland in 1886 for the Port Phillip Bay Excursion Company. She was 260 feet or 79 metres long with a displacement of 572 tonnes. After 32 years of plying the waters of Port Phillip Bay, she was partly dismantled before finally being scuttled off indented head in 1925. A rusting paddle wheel and, a hu and hull fragments are all that remain today. Edwards Point Swan Bay provides a perfect anchorage for the night. In the morning it's off to visit the site of the J3 submarine. The J3 submarine was built for the Royal Navy at the Pembroke Dock in Wales in 1915 and was gifted to the Royal Australian Navy in 1919. She was 275 feet or 84 metres long with a displacement of 1,210 tonnes. Powered by diesel on the surface or electric wind submerged, she saw little use before finally being scuttled off Squan Island in 1924 for economic reasons. Time to sail around the great sand of southern Port Phillip Bay before heading back to Geelong. The 
Pope's eye annulus marks the southern end of the Great Sand. It's always a pleasure to visit Chinaman's Hat with its permanent seal colony. The water shallows as I pass between South Channel Fort and Mud Islands. Due to the shallow depths, the area is prone to strong currents, so motor sailing was needed for Naringa to make headway against the ebb tide. I head into Lineburner's Lagoon for a peaceful night before heading back to the boat ramp in the morning. 